Morning guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're having a good Thursday. Can I help you? Um, sorry about the Doug Bernard's references. I need to tone them down. I know. I, bleh. Today on the Corvette, I'm going to start... I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Can I help you? I'm not really sure what I'm doing for most of the day, but I want to at least, you know, make, make a start. And I'm going to start trying to put some of this Focal Bam sound deadening on the back skin of, this, of the driver's door. Let me turn that radio down because it's annoying me. I fucking hate radio ads. Right, so I'm already kind of set up here. You'll see I've got my big spotlight lighting it up so I can see what I'm doing. And I've got... Okay, and I've got the fan heater at the back here just gently warming the metal of the door. And what that does is by warming up the metal it means that the butyl or the sticky side of sound deadening, no matter what brand it is, sticks to it way better because when it goes on it kind of semi melts it a wee bit and then when it cools it dries on really nice and sticky and basically it prevents it from falling off in the future. So now I don't have that much, this is all the Focal Bam we have left. We have got some more on the way though so I'm not worried about that. This is going to be enough to get almost one of the doors back skins done. I will need some more once it arrives though, but at least I can get this part done. So this Focal Bam, a lot of you, if you haven't heard of it, uh, maybe may know what sound editing is, something along the lines of Dynamat is a really popular um, brand. Everyone across the world knows what Dynamat is. Basically this is the same sort of thing. It's got a sticky butyl layer on the back, which does the sound editing of the metal, but then it's also got this foam layer on top, acoustic foam. And what that does is it's kind of like a sound dampener and it means that any back wave that comes off the speaker because let's just assume this is our speaker right and I actually have a little demo pad and here I've got a piece of metal with some Dynamat everyone knows Dynamat and some Focal Bam on it and so if the speaker was say like this in the door or whatever in front of the two materials basically when this is moving back and forward, even though there's sound coming out of here mainly, there's also sound coming out of the back of it. And so when the sound comes out the back of it, with the dynamat, it just bounces right off and comes back out the door. And you often end up hearing it. So basically the sound comes back, hits the dynamat, bounces off, comes back out, and you hear it again. Even though you may not realise it, you're actually hearing two... You're basically hearing an echo throughout your car of all the sound hitting the metal and coming back into your ear. But the idea with the Focal Bam is it has this acoustic foam on it and the sound comes back, hits it, and it basically just stops there. It gets absorbed or um, diffused. So essentially what it does is it eliminates the reverb or echo sound of the back wave coming from the speaker. So it's like Dynamat plus acoustic foam. Which is good. So what we tend to do when we do uh, sound editing indoors behind speakers is we put Focal Bam on the back skin behind the speaker and then since it's not as necessary in the front here, I mean you can but the acoustic foam doesn't really make much more difference on this skin so what we tend to do is put Dynamat on this skin. We do a Bam and Dynamat combo. The reason we do that and we don't just do Bam everywhere is because it is slightly more expensive than Dynamat by the meter so to save the customers money they don't need the acoustic foam in here. I suppose one thing it could be useful for is if you put the Focal Bam across this whole sheet of metal and it's not gonna be a problem for this car because you can see the looms are already pretty well sounded in themselves like with this foam wrap but if you had a lot of rattly looms in front of the Dynamat that could rattle I suppose and the Focal acoustic foam would absorb that sound but that's not gonna be the case in this car. I'm just gonna do Dynamat over the skin, Bam over the back uh, so, got myself a couple of cleaning products here. I've got, I don't really know what this stuff is. It's called Moto Muck. Um, who gave me this? I can't remember. Someone gave me this and so I brought it into work. It's, I'm going to use that to begin with just to clear away all the dirt and grime that's on the back there, like the chunky bits of dirt. And then once that's done, I've got my wax and grease remover, which is going to completely, it's like an alcohol, very strong. It's going to completely take off all the greases or contaminations on that back skin which is going to mean that when the sticky stuff goes on it there's nothing that it's not going to like 
do the old and stick peh and fall off. You want it to stick and then not be able to come back off. So that's what I'm going to start by doing. Clean it with this, clean it with that. Measure up and cut pieces to size to fit in here because you can see I've only got this big hole and this hole to work with. So I'll start by, and I won't be able to do it all in one sheet obviously, I'll just do my best to get it in there. And that's where I'm going to go from there. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Well guys, after all that, I think I did a pretty, de pretty decent uh, job. Got one, all one piece of great big Focal Bam going from that end all the way up where it, to where it stops, which is there. Still need to do this section. Um, and I've also got a strip, if I come in here, you guys might be able to see, up the top there, in this, above the rail here. At the ends, it kind of, the section kind of thins out, so I'm just covering that section, that's all I need to do. But um, yeah, quite happy, I got one big piece in there. And I've also taken the time to completely clean this whole surface. So it's totally ready for dynamite now. It took whatever module this is, probably to do with the central locking and the window off. Oh, it's got sticky stuff on the, oh no it doesn't. It took that off, um, got the loom all unclipped, got the door mechanism off. And so it's completely ready for dynamite now. And I've circled with Vivid just the wee sections that need to be left exposed so that I can still put nuts and pops and everything in so I need to cut sections of dynamite out for those to show through but yeah that's that door pretty much done well not done you know what I mean the only piece of exist of uh, existing ugly sanding they haven't taken off is this but I'm just gonna leave that because you know what that's a whole lot of it there that I don't want to take off and it's only covering a tiny little hole just there but I got off the broken bits that were up here the broken bits that were up here all of the nasty butyl that was around the outside of here if any of you guys know a trick to like spray onto that awful sticky butyl stuff and make it just fall off, please tell me because I only know the way of doing it with like wax and grease remover and a screwdriver and a whole lot of time and dirty fingers. So let me know if you know a trick for that. What am I up to now? You know what I think I'll do? I think I might start making up a baffle for the speaker and tackling that. I'm definitely gonna make an 18 mil baffle to go around here for the woofer and the tweeter. And also I need your guys' uh, input or opinions. What do you think I should do? Should I have the crossovers for these Rockford Fosgate T1 uh, speakers? Should I have them on display with the amps or should I have them hidden in here on the back of the baffle? Uh, I'll show you what they look like. So this is the type of crossover that will uh, be in the car. It's just a square thing. Do you think we should put that mounted next to the amps in the car or on the back side of the baffle in this hole? The same as what the original speakers were. What do you think, crossovers on display or not on display? Let me know what you think. I'll put a poll up in the corner. But what I, I can start making that baffle. And for this hole, I'm toying with the idea of making a piece of wood to fill it in. Probably like somewhere between eight and 12 mil thickness. It'll have to be uh, PK screwed in because I won't be able to get any nuts in here. And I've noticed, okay, so you guys probably know, are all Corvettes made entirely out of this composite fiberglass board stuff is that normal or is it just this cow or is it i don't know i've never really seen it before like the entire door i don't think maybe yeah the outer skin as well like the entire car is made of this lightweight fiberglass polymer board stuff did you guys know that is that normal i've just never come across it before i've come across it for sections of things but never the whole car anyway i'm gonna try and make a baffle i just had what is, in my opinion, a legendary idea. 
need this, this, I need some cardboard. Oh, oh this is gonna be legendary. I, what I want to do for the baffle of the woofer in Twitter is copy the exact shape of this original baffle because I just checked it in the car and this exact shape with the wings and everything matches the shape of the metal on the car perfectly like even like bridging between the widest points of this thing it would overhang on the metal so I, that's why I want to copy this exactly but rather than trying to use a router bit or I don't know trying to hand sketch it I'm gonna try and come up with something genius so what I need first of all is a hole like that and now I trace the outside shape like a boss. If I wanted to get serious, I could cut out, or oh, actually what I might do is I'm just gonna unbolt this woofer off of here, because that will prevent this big basket from sitting through and I need to unplug the woofer to begin with. Uh, that looks like a seven mil. No, it's an eight. No, it's not an eight. What? What am I doing wrong here? Seven doesn't fit. Oh wait, that was a six. That, wait, seven is too big and six is too small. Ah, it's fucking imperial. Right. So this one. Nope. So this one. Yes, that is a quarter inch. Fucking imperial bullshit. I hate imperial stuff. Nobody uses it in cars except Americans. Nobody uses it in anything except Americans. One. Oh, they both came off, cool. Bose woofer, cool. I could unbolt this whole thing as well, but oh no wait, that's one, that's all one big bit of plastic, I think. I can't tell. No, it is one bit of plastic, so I can't take that off. Okay, now I can perfectly trace this shape. There's the shape. Now, I need to transfer this. Transfer this shape to this piece of board and very carefully cut it out with the jigsaw. transfer this shape to a piece of 18 millimeter. A okay. couple of bits of wood here. So after I've traced these, I will rough cut it with the jigsaw and then hit it with the flush trim bit on the table router and then because my jigsaw cuts aren't they're pretty nice but they're not you know perfectly beautiful I'll probably have to hit it with the power file as well just to make it a bit smoother and nicer looking. Something I do need to do quickly is drill these mounting holes with the drill press because that will cut a straighter hole than I will be able to. These are ready for jigsawing now. Actually, no, they're not. They're ready. For, oh, yes, I need to rough cut them first, you're right. There we go. Got my two baffles made. Um, I made a wee bit of a mistake. 
These two bits of wood are different heights. This one is like a 20 mil. Yeah, 20 or 22 or something, that's 18. Um, I decided to route around that 22 mil anyway, rather than going and jigsawing out another piece, because this might be fine. I'm not, gonna be, I'm not too bothered by the fact that one side will be slightly closer to the door than the other. So I'll try and use this one first, that way I'll know if there's gonna be any issues. But let's go check the fitment, I think. This should just go. Oh, we're losing the speed clips. Just like that. Sweet, that's good, I'm happy with that. What I need to do next is uh, find the center of this point here. Actually, that should be pretty easy. I can just do a cross like that. Drill a hole, and then I'm gonna cut out the hole for the uh, woofer to go through. Yep, I'm gonna do that now, actually. Okay, there we go, I cut the holes in both of the baffles. I decided that if I've got the right size, I might as well do both of them. I've already test fitted it with the woofer and it's all good. So, what I can do next is, I'm not sure, maybe look at if there's anything I need to do for the tweeter. So this is the original unit. Let's compare this to our 22mm. So the baffle itself is already about the same height as what this thing is, and then the tweeter comes out even further. So I can probably just mount the tweeter straight on that, uh, straight in the tweeter cup onto the center of that thing, firing outwards in some way. So I think depth wise, I'm gonna to be totally fine. The 18 mil is gonna be even more totally fine. There'll be no worries there. Because even um, when this thing was on it, this thing actually comes out even further. You can see the height of that. There's no way the woofer comes out that far. Yep. We're gonna be sweet as for height and depth. I'm not, overly concerned in this scenario about sealing like the woofer to the or the tweeter to the door like i'm not that concerned about it in this connect in this case because we're just trying to make it loud and yeah i think it should be totally fine so what i need to do now is drill the mounting holes for the woofers and after that i think i can pretty much after that i think i can pretty much um Paint them. Yeah. I'll give them a quick sand and then I'll paint them. I'm wondering if I should put a, uh, a step down around the outside. I'm thinking I might, just to make the um, whole outside section like kind of half height. Don't know, probably not necessary. Uh, it all depends on whether or not the door cards hit them. Yeah, see around this bottom corner would be a bit concerning because if this is sticking out and the door card is here, I think I will put a step down in it. But angle wise. Okay, so I uh, drilled the holes and I was just thinking about that rabbiting bit idea and I don't think I'm going to do it now because literally this is all the router bits we have. We don't have mobile solutions in New Zealand. So the biggest rabbit bit or any bit that we've got doesn't cut in enough to take out the wood that I need to to do that. So I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm just going to hope that it works totally fine without having to do that. But yeah, these are ready to paint. Oh, oh wait, I, only thing I haven't done is I could drill a hole for the tweeter wire to go through. I need to figure out where I'm going to put the tweeters. Hang on. Hang on, Willis. Alright, so here's a Rock and Fosgate tweeter cap that I'm just going to use. So I'm probably, if this is like this in the door, I'm probably going to use that angled point there. Just fire it up like that. That makes sense to me. Yep. So all I need to do is decide if I want this to be down close to the woofer like this or if I want it to be up high. I'll probably just put it right smack dab in the middle. That's a simple answer. 
So this is that's about the middle there. Half mil. And a couple more. Need to mark the little holes for the screw holes. So that's going to be there. Actually, you know what? Mm. No, you know what? I'm actually going to do the tweeter cup mount once this is all on and everything is pretty much done because I want to be able to rotate this to the angle that I want. So I'm not going to draw the holes for those manic points yet. So that's that done. These are ready for paint. This is, I hate getting paint on my fingers. Ow. them over once they're fully dry do the bottom side and do the edge again because the edge always seems to absorb some when you spray painting also turn it upside down and spray it spray a wall or something until only aerosol comes out and that cleans the nozzle okay progress update um, I've painted the baffles I've flipped them over and done the other side they are almost dry what is this going on here they're almost dry and while that's been happening I've been working on something that I may or may not do depending on whether it works or not um, I've made up out of cardboard a stencil to fill in this whole gap I don't know if you guys saw it in the other videos or not but there was a uh, piece of plastic glued in here and then it had a step down and a recess which allowed all this polystyrene to sort of slot into it if I put a board here, this will definitely be an issue. Um, so what I'm thinking I'd do, I'd still like to do the board. I'm not sure how thick I'm gonna go. It's either gonna be like four mils or eight mils or 12, I'm not sure. Probably not 12 mil, maybe eight mil MDF. And I think I'm gonna have to cut up some of this polystyrene because from this edge all the way down to this edge along here, that originally sat into this, I'm pretty sure. Although I may, actually I may be able to get away with, I'll go slowly, I'll start by taking this section here off because if you look this is like if you look at this sort of here this pop obviously lines up with that so I've got about that much depth to work with which lines up perfectly with this so I wouldn't may not have to cut all this off I might just have to cut this extended piece off here with a big knife I could do that I tried taking the screws out that hold it in to see if I could get it out but it must be glued in as well what I really need is a hot wire to cut through there hmm not sure. What I may have to do is the old uh, slice and grid it so that I can start taking chunks off because I don't want to cut the whole depth of it out. I just want to take this raised piece off. So anyway, what I think I'm going to do now is transfer this stencil to a piece of wood of a thickness that I think seems all right. And then I will end up putting some sand deadening on the back of it as well as on the front of it. So it'll be very, very well stuck in. And then, well, what I'll do is I'll sand deaden a peat, like a section of the back of it I'll put RTV around here, push it on, it's gonna glue itself on overnight pretty easily. And when this is on here, there'll probably be Dynamat lapping over top of it as well. So it'll be easily stuck in. And I'm pretty much finished in here because after I finished filming doing this piece of sand deadening, I actually went and found a couple of spare bits of Focal Bam and managed to fill in that back corner gap there. And I've also put a couple of bits of Dynamat on the wider bits down the bottom here as well. So I'm pretty much done at this back section and if I'm ready. I can seal this off. No worries. So I, I can do that now. So I think I'm gonna go cut this out now and see how I get on. So I really would like to use this thickness here. This is like oh, maybe 8mm or 9mm MDF. That would be like the best because it's kind of like rigid. Um, unfortunately I don't have any pieces that thickness big enough to do that stencil. Um, the next step up would probably be up to this which is 12mm but to be honest that's just way too overkill for all it's doing. Um, I've got this piece here which is nice but it's only like 4mm thick, it's a wee bit flexy. 
But then there's this piece here, which I think is six mils, and this is an ideal, but you can see the problem already, it's got a curve in it. It was actually off a comparator that has been dismantled. Um, I am thinking I'll still use it though. I'll see if the curve becomes an issue. It's only a very slight one, and the RTV would be able to hold it flat without any trouble. It's just how do I get it to set with this held correctly in place. I may have to use some nuts or bolts or screws or something like that, I'm not sure. And it's got a painted side. So possibly what that means is I could put the painted side facing the inside of the car with the little stick of dynamite on it, little piece, and this side would be pretty much water resistant. Not facing the inside of the car, sorry, facing the inside of the door. So any water that goes down inside the window jam or inside the window slot, this would be protected against wa uh, water because it's got this finished gloss black on it. So that would probably be ideal. So this, I'll probably put it through the table saw, take this edge off, make a nice new edge have that and then I can cut another one out from that side like that. I think this seems like a good plan to me. I better just check that the stencil goes over to the other side as well. Quickly line this up. Yep, no worries. So I think that's my plan. Make these things. Alrighty. There we go. One, two. I realized as I was tracing that I need to flip the stencil over to make the mirror image since I'm trying to have the painted side on the inside of the door for both of them. There we go. So this one, oh wait no, this one will go here like that. They might stay there. And this one will go like that. Nice, perfect. Perfectly made, it's like it was made for it by a CNC machine. But no, it's just my awesome jigsawing skills made for it. I think I will probably put some screws, just some token screws around the outside to hold it on while the RTV dries. Probably one in the corner, maybe one here, here and here, just to stop it from curving while it's drying. Now do I want to sand in on this bit? Probably don't have to, since I'm going to be putting RTV there. And then this. Step. So I'm gonna have to dynamite. Yeah, that's already pretty dead. Whether I need to put any more over top of that, I'm not sure. I could do. I need to dynamite this section first. I suppose I could put this piece on there. So I think that's what I need to do next is dynamite the door itself, i.e., all of this and around here. And do I want to dynamite onto the section where the baffle's going? I think I probably should. Yeah, I think I will. Okay, cool, that's my next plan. So I need to dynamite the door and then put the wiring harness back into position so that I can put this on with the glue and let it dry overnight. Sweet. I'll chuck you on a time lapse for that because that's going to take me a while.
All right, guys, I'm gonna have to cut it there. It's past five o'clock. I don't get past. I, I don't get paid past five o'clock, so I need to go home. Pat doesn't like me staying around too late. So this is how far I got. I'm pretty happy with what I've done. It was actually much harder than I thought it was going to be compared to some cars. Oh, I could probably put one of those. That that could probably go up in there because that piece is falling. There we go. Esposito, zito. So I'm very happy with how it's uh, looking. Obviously it looks really cool with the inside all done. Actually, I'm gonna trim that edge where because I'm not happy with that. But yeah, I've basically got the whole sort of front section done and I've got the required pieces little chopped out for the bolts to go in and the pops as well. Got the grommets through, so that's working. Is that one all the way through? Yep, that's working. So tomorrow, this section, keep going. I will put a piece along here as well, and over those, and then a piece on here. Actually, what I would really prefer to do is once this is glued on, just put one big piece over top of it, covering the whole thing. That's what I'd like to do. It's already a pretty dead door considering it's made out of fiberglass. Well, when I say considering, I don't mean, I mean like, you know, it's made out of fiberglass, so it's already a pretty damn dead door. So yeah, that's where I'm up to. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I will pick up on this where I left off tomorrow morning. See you then. Have a good day. Choose to be happy. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Kaki te ano.